We're back with Julia Fullerton Batten as we dive deeper into how she creates her stunning images that feel just like you're looking into the past. Let's look at some more of your, I'm, I'm going back to that screen where we've got, okay, this one, tell us the story here. Baptism used to take place in the River Thames, uh -huh. where there was, um, especially where there was no tide. So the river is very tidal in, in London, but once you leave London and you go to a place called Wiltshire, um, it, it, it isn't tidal. And what I, even though I'm recreating these scenes and there are historical kind of references, I try and find, I spend a long time finding the exact place where, for example, this baptism took place. Okay. I'm very excited to find this this part of the river where um, a baptism actually did take place. And um, if I can just share, oh, this is yeah. me, oh, me wow. and my school team in the water. And we had to traipse through the water, which took about 10 minutes to go to this exact spot. Amazing. <laughs> Um, and bring everything in by little boats and kind of just wade through it. Luckily, it wasn't wasn't too too deep. But as you can see, I'm sat, I always um, shoot from a tripod. Um, the camera is static, so I'm treating it a little bit. I mean, it's not reportage at all. It's very kind of controlled and very very set up. Yes. And then once I've got my scene. I then create the lights around around my subject matter and. Um, place the people in the set um, and I create a little bit of a, a mist with a smoke machine that you can see oh, that kind yes. of in the distance that you'll have two or three assistants running around in the background uh, creating that, that kind of look and um, this is actually my reference that I that I oh, found amazing and that took place which I just thought was so so incredibly beautiful these two you know, a priest and someone else the guided this, there. Yeah. this beautiful girl into the water to be, to be baptized. Can we go back to your lighting setup? I'm really curious. And if you could walk us through this. First of all, are these all battery powered or did you have to have a generator along with you? The, these are all batteries. Okay. So you've got You've got the packs actually hanging yeah, on stands, which are also weighting the 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 stand down. Um, but you know everything just felt a little bit precarious. <laughs> That's but, amazing uh, to put that in the water. So okay, you've got the big soft box there, and then these are strobes, I assume, right up front there. Yeah. So okay. we've got a beauty okay. dish um, on on a on a mega boom, okay. which is which is above her, which is lighting lighting her from above. Okay. Um, on a double wind up and um and then there are a couple of grids grids on the side that where i i i tend to spot quite a lot of things if i want to pick out you know his clothing or her face um or something that's a bit too dark and what you can't see is there's also lights on the side on the right behind her that will be creating a hair light behind oh, her as well. interesting okay. We're not actually seeing all the lights that we we put in the set you're really controlling, and we mentioned that we talked about this yesterday. But you're really controlling all your lighting in camera on the set, rather than um, doing. A, and it sounds like you can avoid a lot of post production that way, because you've really got it the way you want it. Yeah, I mean, I try and shoot everything in camera. Obviously, the um, tower bridge, I couldn't, uh, yeah. unfortunately. But I try and shoot everything, and bring the surrealness with my lighting. I mean, people often say, hang on, the sun is coming from wherever on the right yeah. of the set. Why, why are you putting a light on the left to create the sun? But that's me creating that kind of slightly weird cinematic effect, which I like. Let's go back so to it, the image itself. Well, I want to see that now that I've, I've got a better understanding of what you're doing with the lighting. If you could... Uh bring that image bring the actual image back that would be fantastic oh the um the yeah, original there we go okay yeah now that okay so it's interesting to see it from behind the scenes and now go back to um yeah and you have those clouds there you have the smoke you have all sorts of stuff the reflections in the water there's a lot of layers here 
Very I mean, I took, I took another image of her immersed in the water, but but I preferred her, preferred this one in the end. It's it's hard. I find the I find the editing bit super hard because I you come back with so many images and you know there was one that was very very um, also very atmospheric, very dynamic, and at the end of the day, I've you know I sit on the images for a long long time, keep going back, and I print them out and hang them on my wall. And just have to decide on, on, on the one to tell that story in the end. You know, that's a let's talk about that for a minute, because I think that's really important to have that time and not rush through the whole process of deciding which images you're going to keep. And, you know, that doesn't happen in a split second. Sometimes we can, you know, get so rushed about things that it, it's almost like it has to grow on you and you come back. Right. So is that what happens? You kind of look at them. I like the way you print them and look at them and give them time to mature. Yeah. And also as, as a project is expanding, I keep, you know, the ones that I have already been completed, I hang them on the wall, you know, they're just kind of a four size and I just blue tack them to my wall. Okay. And, um, and then I add the new ones and see how they work as a project. Um, no, I find the editing bit really, really hard. And because there's no deadline, there is no client, there's right. no rush, there's no rush to get the project out. I sit on it for a good, sometimes a month or two before I actually decide, because I just got to keep going back to it and keep looking at it. And I find that that part also really, really important. And then you said, so are you doing a, a fairly simple printing? I mean, you're just using like the printer that you have behind you? Yeah, it's just okay. printed with my Epson printer. And, you know, they're not, it's, it is color calibrated, but it's not having it professionally printed. It's yeah. really just looking at it as it's more about, I've shot it now. It's not that I can change anything about it. It's more what store, which image is telling the best story that right. I don't need the most text i mean often i have to explain things with text and i think text does help but it'd be nice to also show the image without text and for people to see the image and go okay this obviously he's 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 holding the crucifix there's something religious happening here yeah she's in water they're you know they're wet he's you know there's something happening here that's religious. Hopefully people do read that it might be a baptism. Um, but to me, it's kind of, it's storytelling, isn't it? It's it is kind storytelling. Of, Absolutely. It is telling the best story. And that's, that's what I love. It's, it's, it's telling stories, which is what photography is really about. You know, and I just want to point out to our audience here, you guys, this is a really good point about prints. You know, you, you don't have to obsess over your final print. You could print a bunch of work prints, put them on the wall. I love anything that gets it off the digital platform because it's not how it's going to end up looking at the end of the day. But there is something... This is what we used to do back in the darkroom. We, we would make our test prints and and display them put you know t tack them up on the wall like you said until you saw the one that you really thought okay this is it and then you go for it you know Ansel Adams did that for sure he made all these test prints before he committed to the final version and i think that's really important and i remember it's only what 10 15 years ago where i used to go and visit my printer and look at all the test prints yeah. and Go, go go through them all. And now you can just do it with your Epson and or whatever you're using. I think that's really important. Okay, let's go back to, uh, let's go back and have a look at some more of your images. I love these stories. And by the way, I just want to underscore something. One of the things that I think during our lockdown that people could be emulating this, even in their own home or apartment, you know, visualizing a photograph ahead of time and then setting it up right there in your space, whether it's with your, a few of your friends or family or whatever, you know, this, this is something we all have access to. And it, it's important that we find ways to, you know, keep expanding as photographers and growing, especially during this time period. 
So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and enable that bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. And as always, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.